Divine Truth Assistance Group. Group Assistance Sessions, Putting Principles of Divine Truth into Action. This recording is from the Understanding God's Loving Laws group and is part of an Education in Love series. In the Session 1 Reminders and Homework Review presentation, Mary works through reminders from the previous Foundation Principles session and reviews the homework of the participants. Recorded on the 8th of November 2016, in New Seville, Queensland, Australia. Well, good morning. I hope you had a good day off. Did you have a good day off? Yes. Yeah. Was it off or were you doing homework desperately? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, today we're going to start in on the, your session two principles. Uh, but before we do that, I have this opportunity to, to really remind you of what we learnt about in session one and to go through the homework with you. And as I mentioned at the close uh, the last time we were here, I'd love to help have your homework help us do the review of the actual principles. So let's get going. Just a reminder that our first session was all about foundation principles. And remember we had this diagram, this lovely diagram, which helped us conceptualise really the whole idea of what we're here to talk about this week. And that was God, God is this what kind of entity? infinite entity who has uh, personality, character, attributes and desires which really guide the principles which God has and then God has created laws that exist within a hierarchy that you're going to learn more about today um, but God's created laws in harmony with those principles and those laws govern all of God's creation um, the so that includes the universe non-living matter, living creatures, and the human soul. And in our foundation principles, we learned that these principles are applied to all of creation, aren't they? To the universe, they, the, they are applied to all laws that God has created and therefore affect all of creation. Okay, so we've, we've basically covered that and I'm not going to go through every slide with you this morning because I want to really focus in on your homework. But perhaps the key point here is that these foundation principles mean that the laws that God has created give us the opportunity to experience love and really to feel safe and secure. Remember there was that theme of ha growing trust in what, in what God has done and God's love for us even. And we can learn a lot about God's nature and personality by examining the laws and examining the principles that govern those laws. Okay. All right. The dis what were the first two we discussed? You can call them out, the principles we discussed. Love, Love and truth. truth. Very good. Next one's... Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody saw that. Uh, next two? Life and, development. Life and development. Next one's... Yep. And the final two? Uh, and scope. And scope. Yep. Awesome. So this morning we'll have the opportunity to talk more about those and hopefully you had some good experiences considering how they apply to your life. We also had two uh, other presentations within the session. The first was fundamental facts. Yep. And Jesus basically introduced a lot of those things which I've just covered with you. Uh, didn't he, about God's nature, God being infinite, and why we're really here this week, what it's all about. And what was the second one? Human law comparison, yeah. And that's our little lead-in to this juicy discussion we're getting to in this next session, which is all about law, our hangover or our emotions regarding law. Okay. All right. Now, we can skip that one. We've done that. And the comparison, the key thing from the comparison was a lot about our pain and happiness, wasn't it? Whether we, if we're out of harmony with law, we're automatically creating pain. Because remember, Jesus reminded us that every time we're out of harmony with law, we're what are we? Sinning. And we learnt in our last assistance group that every time we sin, we create more pain and suffering for ourselves. So this gives us good information, doesn't it? It means if we can learn about God's laws and come to love them and open our heart to them and live in harmony with them, we're going to eliminate what? Sin. Sin. 
and therefore have happiness. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's get on to your homework. And this is where I'd love to hear from you guys. This was your question with regard to the love principles. How am I living in or out of harmony with the love principles? So I've got your love principles summarised up here again, just the summary that we had on your outlines, but I'm sure that you all looked thoroughly over those outlines to consider this question yesterday. So who would like to share something they discovered where they were either in or out of harmony with the principle? Uh, yes, Alicia? Um, where I was out of harmony, I withdraw and we ha withhold my love to others because I'm afraid of being rejected, misunderstood and judged. Okay, yeah. Uh, so anyone else? Uh, Maxine, if we just go straight ahead. Thanks, Diane. If I was out of love with the principles, I'd be out of harmony by projecting my anger, not taking personal responsibility. And yep. not being in truth of, and not loving myself and others. Yeah, yeah. So there's some good things you said there, actually. You can automatically know you're out of harmony with the love principles when you're projecting emotion, can't you? And not, this love of self issue is a really important one for you, but it's an important one for, for a lot of us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Something I wanted to raise with you guys is the importance of the love principle. So if you consider, these are all our foundational principles, aren't they? And w Jesus taught us that love and truth are really key to everything, aren't they? They are like the foundation of the foundation of the foundation of God's laws. That's, that's everything is based on love and truth. And so if you consider that, if we are out of harmony with this love principle, we're automatically out of harmony with every single law that God has created. And this is where I notice a lot of us are not really considering how serious it is when we're in our addictions, because that's when we're out of harmony with the love principle, isn't it? Or as Maxine said, when we're projecting our anger. We're not really considering woes. Like, when I did that, I broke every single one of God's laws. Yeah. And this is where these principles, if we can come to really examine what it's all about, we start to get like a really deep sort of a sense for how sin is car being carried on in our life and, and why there is so much unhappiness in our life or the life of people around us. Yeah, yeah. Okay, someone else. Let's go to Louise. Um, I've got some issues with forgiveness and repentance. Um, that's love, isn't it? Yes. Yes. Well, when we, when we are in harmony with the, with the love principles, we want to love others and we want to, cease our, we want to feel our sin and release our sin, don't we? And yeah. so that's what's yeah. required to, to forgive and repent, yeah. And um, wanting to stay in my comfort zone and control events in my life and just... And what's that, Louise? What's the emotion driving you when you do that? Uh, fe fear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. So living in fear, yeah. Um, I've just got some fears, fear of violence, public speaking, be um, being shamed. So, so the honour of those fears. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's okay to have fears, but when we honour them, that's when we're out of harmony with the love principle. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. All right, one more and then... Uh, I might move on. I'm thinking there's a few things you guys are skipping over a bit here in terms of the broader way that these principles are applied to your life. If we go right up back to Dave, and then I might mention a couple of other examples. I'm not humble and I have the world's view of love, not God's. So a resistance even to, to yes. taking on God's view of love. Yep. Okay. Here's a couple of ones that I thought about. A resistance to receiving love, which Maxine has mentioned. What about this idea that if someone doesn't love me, then I don't want to love them? That's a big one, isn't it? And it's a big way we're breaking this principle constantly. 
What about, I want others to love me so that I don't have to love me. <laughs> or love means doing what someone else wants. So if they love me, they've got to do what I want. And if I love them, I've got to do what they want. That's a big one on earth, isn't it? Yep. This is something I thought about in families or in relationships. When you're raising an issue with someone, a child or your partner, about something that you're seeing as a lack of love, are you consistent about that? Are you loving in the way that you do it? And are you really seeing the issues of love or are you just responding to when you feel a bit uncomfortable or challenged yourself and then you let a lot of other stuff go? That is, that is actually very unloving because it doesn't really bother you that much. Yeah. So these are some of the ways that like, this love principle literally permeates all of our life. Anyway, guys, I know we could talk about each of these principles for ages. Let's keep going and go on to truth because I'd love to hear from more of you. Okay. So how are we living in or out of harmony with the truth principles? If we come to Glenda here, and then we'll go to Deidre on the other side. I have real problems still with those words enforced and compelled. It brings up a lot of anger and resistance in me. So how is that relating to the principle? What does that tell you? that I'm resisting truth and love. Mm -hmm. um, that I yep. don't really... That you don't want it? Yeah, and yeah. I'm, I'm seeing it more from man's laws rather than God's definition of truth and love. Sure, sure. Okay. Deirdre? Hi. Um, I'm out of harmony where I want to be right... Oh, sorry. I want to be right all the time and I want my truth to be right, not God's truth to be absolute mm -hmm. and the harm that causes. This is the first time I thought about this. I want to keep lying to myself. I love it. My lying to myself prevents me from having to confront the difference between my truth and God's truth. Yeah. And I remain stuck in my views and opinions. I can't progress. I alienate myself because who wants to be around someone who's right all the time? <laughs> I'm I wouldn't lying. Mind being around God, he's right all the time. <laughs> yeah, but um, I know it's probably a bit saying. different coming from me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm lying to myself, and I'm wanting to remain ignorant about how much, um, uh, how much I want to avoid my fear and terror, and it's my issue, fear and terror, that's controlling me. Good on your sister. Yeah, there's some reflection there. Yep. All right, if we come to Amber, and then I'll mention a few things as well. Um, where I found I was actually in harmony with truth is I'm making an effort to heal my soul and have a truthful, sensitive, heartfelt connection to others as well as God. Oh, Amber, I'd have to disagree with you on that fact. Yeah, we, you and I have had an interaction just in this very assistance group where I was pointing out some truth to you and you argued with me about it for a good 10 minutes. So I don't feel that you're sincere yet about, about really seeing truth. Remember Deirdre's just talked to us about her desire to hold on to her, what she believes is truth and not being willing to accept that there is an absolute truth about a situation. Now, that's exactly what happened in our exchange. So you need to be careful about not lying to yourself about how you're in harmony with truth. Okay? Yeah. All right. Again, I wanted to highlight to you guys how living out of harmony with these principles puts us in opposition with all law, just like the loved ones. But have you considered that when you do live in harmony with truth, the converse is true, that every single one of God's laws is actually operating to your benefit. It kind of makes you reassess, like, your fear of telling the truth, doesn't it? It does for me, you know, like, 
I could be in total opposition to all of God's creation and God's universe and God's laws and create pain and suffering, or I could just, you know, face up, feel my fear, say the truth, and then I get the benefit of all of God's laws operating for my benefit and for the benefit of everyone else involved. A lot of times we're resisting that, aren't we? Resisting that knowledge. Yeah. Your facade is a major way that you are living out of harmony with truth, the truth principle. It's all lies and you keep presenting it as truth. A lot of times I see a lot of us have a lack of desire. So some people are developing a willingness, oh, yeah, okay, I'll tell the truth or I'll be transparent or I'll share my financial records or... Yep, all right, that's, that's God's laws, okay. But it's not a desire, is it? And really, when we're in harmony with these principles, it's a desire. It's like, yeah, God, I'm on your team, let's do this. Yep, okay. Not speaking up when you know something for sure, or implying something is truth when you know it's not, or you're not really sure, without saying, look, I'm not sure, but this, or this is my opinion. Just saying, no, this is how it is. Yeah. All right. And a lot of you have a feeling about truth, which is, yeah, I'll be truthful to the point that it starts to get uncomfortable for me. Or I'll, tell, I'll share divine truth with the world to the point that people start ridiculing me or my family cracks up, or, or even I'll listen to divine truth to the point that, you know, someone starts attacking me, and then all bets are off. It's all out the window then. And if you think about Jesus and I, if we had that attitude to truth, we say, we love God's truth, we want to share it with the world. Oh, someone just sent me hate mail. That's it, I'm going home. Do you see, you, when we're in harmony with the truth principle, as it is with many of these foundation principles, we have ethics. We have, we have a desire. We're not, we're not changeable according to the situation. Yeah, okay. All right, guys. Yeah, we've got to keep going. Okay. I'm pointing out some of these things because I just, I really felt that this is an opportunity for you guys to really recognise how deep your reflection can be about these principles, you know. Okay, let's talk about life principles. Who would like to share where they found their in or out of harmony with the life principles? If we go to Nat, and then after that we'll come to you, Ivana. Um, out of harmony. I have not felt my life is precious and sacred because I've abused it with drugs. Mm -hmm. I have not seen that life, any life is precious and sacred because I've had abortions. I don't nurture, respect or value the lives of my family as all the actions I take with them are to gratify my own needs and ease my pain and suffering. And my refusal to seek truth about it means I break more laws pertaining to love and truth principles. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of... A lot of truth there, yep. Okay, Ivana. Um, I've got quite a few, but I'll just say... Yeah, like if you one. can just give us one or two. Yeah. Um, like having anger towards certain creatures that God has created, like mosquitoes when they buzz around my head <laughs> and like ants biting me and stuff like that. Yeah. So that's obviously not valuing what... God has created. Yes. So, yeah. And you actually want them not to be living in that moment, don't yes. you? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And this is something that Jesus mentioned to me over breakfast this morning, is whenever you act out of harmony with the life principles, you're actually destroying creations that God has created to support your life. If you think that everything that God has created is there to support your life, then every time we head outdoors with the weed killer or, you know, we can't avoid every ant that we, we're going to walk on when we, when we go out for a walk. But if we set out putting poison in and all to the ant nest, then we're definitely out of harmony with the, with the life principles, aren't we? Yeah. 
Did anyone have any others? If we go to Anaskevic. Yeah, I'm going to keep. Uh, I don't trust the, the life um, principle as I, I do take um, uh, herbal supplements and uh, her drink herbal tea and uh, uh, treat myself with herbal oil to support my body. Yeah. And uh, the risk to then um, um, miss to, to feel the emotions that is the causal emotions to this. Yes, yeah. Excellent point. And in line with something that I was going to mention, no, you're right, you, yep, that when we shut down any emotion, we're actually kind of killing the life inside of us, aren't we? And we're actually not honouring the life force that God has given to our soul. Yeah, so it's very similar to what Anna's saying. When I try and get around an emotion or not trust God's, the way God set up the life force within me, I'm, I'm sort of totally in disharmony with that principle. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Yvonne? And then we'll move on. Um, I've got a lot of personal ones, but one that's just a bit different is... Um I've been asleep most of my life to what's been happening in the world with regard to racial prejudice and capital punishment and wars and not even aware of anti-war movements on earth since the Vietnam vets and Iraq and Syria. Never thought about it, never got involved and I'm sure there are penalties for sitting on the fence with, with those issues. Well, see, sometimes you have to be careful because anti-war movements can actually be very aggressive as well. But, but it does highlight a good point. When we value our life over another person's life, so we, we feel that our life and our, our continuing to li live in our physical body is more important than the life, even the quality of life of somebody else, then we support war from an emotional perspective, and we are out of harmony with the life principle. Can you see that? Yeah, so... Can I just say, um, with all of these, what I've found, and somebody else mentioned it... No, you can't. No, I can't. <laughs> okay. Sorry, Ron. Yep. Yep. All right, when we eat animal products, we're out of harmony with the life principle. When we kill someone in order to save another one, we're out of harmony with the life principle. And another key thing I wanted to ask you guys about is whether your creations, the things that you're creating in your life, because remember part of the life principle is that things break down and they support more life. So the things that you create in your life, are they actually breaking down into their component parts when you're done with them? Or is there this huge hangover on the earth of there's all this pollution left over from what you create that actually kind of suppresses life or life has to struggle against? That's an important area to consider when it comes to the life principle as well. Yeah. Okay, let's move on. I was thinking about my time. We're all right. Okay. Development principles. It's another Grady, hey? If we come to Karina, how are you living in or out of harmony with those principles? Um, I don't always support my partner in learning through her own mistakes mm -hmm. as I try to rescue her and I try to tell others how to do it and help them rather than ask them questions so they can find their answers. So, yeah, so you're sh trying to, on one hand, push some people into so-called development and on the other hand sort of shutting down the development of someone close to you because of some personal emotions. I'm just trying to control my environment, people, places and things and trying to be God. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah, if we come to Hunter. Not believing that God is our parent who encourages and delights in our growth and joy and values the development of all creatures. Yeah, 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 lovely, okay. Uh, and one more data and then I'll mention a few as well. 
um, occasionally putting myself in situations that bring up error, particularly fear to be released. Yep. Awesome. Good on you. Yeah. Anyone else for have any where they were in harmony with development principles? Yeah, Kel, do you want to tell us? Uh, when I seek education to be self-aware, self-responsible and self-loving, learning about how I can live happily and be loving to others, my partner and creation. Yep, yep, lovely. The cool thing about development principles is, is when you act lovingly towards someone else, you are encouraging their development. This is another positive that maybe you didn't consider, you know. But it's got to be love in harmony with the love principle. But when you do it, you are, you are assisting and encouraging their development. Okay. A couple of other things I noted down. Forcing creation to adapt to and deal with your error-based changes that you make. So let me give you an example. This is when you're out of harmony with development principles. When you go out and you like, around where we live, there's a lot of farming communities and so on. And recently there was a block of land that it had been a regeneration block for a carbon offset or whatever. Someone purchased it and cut down every single tree on the block. Now, that person is probably thinking, well, I'm changing something in order to develop something, I'm going to grow crops or I'm going to do whatever they're going to do there. But they're not considering how the rest of creation is having to adapt and survive given that change that they've made. So all the little creatures that were living in the trees, or the soil, the, then the, when they burn off the actual timber, the smoke pollution that everyone in the community has to endure while they're developing something. And this is, I bring that up because that's sort of a, an, a side example, but if you think about your own lives, there's many times and many ways where you think, I'm going to go and create and develop something but you're not considering how the rest of creation has to deal with the results of what you're doing. And that's out of harmony with the development principle. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, let's keep going. Because I know that you probably want to be chatting about permanence and scope a bit at the end, or I do. <laughs> okay. Economy principles. This one's really interesting, isn't it? Tristan, would you like to tell us how you're in or out of? This is actually one of the harder ones for me. Um, I find very little value in my own time, resources and energy, and I've often chosen to the most inefficient way to accomplish things, often failing or causing others to have to invest their own time to fix it for me, which actually feeds one of my addictions about personal responsibility. So I'm being, being someone else being responsible for me. Yeah. And I, I feel like I do that to get that addiction met. Yeah, so it's really interesting, isn't it, hey? So it's almost to get a feeling of being loved. I don't value any of my, my personal resources because then someone else might value them and then might do some stuff. And then I get to feel at the end of all that, ah, oh, someone loves me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, who else had, that was quite a deep reflection there about the economy. Um, if we go to, who had the hand up over here? Bruce, yep. Um, I allow my fear to control my economy, as in lack, never enough. Um, I'm more important than anyone else, mm -hmm. therefore um, I deserve more. At the same time, I believe and enforce scarcity with people with around me. Sorry, what was the last point, Bruce? I believe and enforce scarcity. In other words, I sort of encourage scarcity, you know, that we don't have enough. Yep. Mm. So the feeling, the feeling is like, oh, we don't have enough, we don't have enough, or we can't feel like we have enough, but actually... We've got plenty. We've got plenty, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, if we go to Jules. Okay. Um... I don't value equally my time, energy and matter. I'm very inefficient. I water the garden. I've created the garden for beauty first before all living matter. 
But as who, you sorry, know. can I just ask you to pause? Who's created a garden for only for the sake of beauty and not to considering all other matter? Be honest. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Most gardens on the planet fit that bill. Yeah. 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 And I put myself first before my responsibility for um, for the environment. So you saying you put your personal comfort before absolutely before consideration of yep. the environment. Yep. Yep. Lovely. Yeah. Just as <laughs> Not long. Not so lovely. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> lovely. Oh, so I can keep no. going. <laughs> yeah. No, that's good. Thanks, Jules. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. All right. Uh, if we come to Jennifer, and then I'll say a, a couple of things. Yeah. where I do not allow sufficient time to process emotions in order to come out of a stagnant place. Yes. When I do process, um, I become much more efficient and resourceful with my energy. Yeah, and that is actually something that I wanted to raise with you guys. It's sort of this weird imbalance, isn't there, where we're not seeing that God's economy, remember, creates abundance. But if we think of things really in the perspective of truth and economy, what is the most economical way to gain personal happiness? Deal with our stuff, deal with our sin, let go of sin. And yet how much do we use our personal resources to actually meet that goal? What do we value, you know? And it's not very economical. And as Jennifer pointed out, actually when you do spend some time, invest some time or resources or something in order to let go of some sin, wow, there's a lot more pr productivity that happens in other areas of your life as well and efficiency because you become more in harmony with love. Yeah. yeah. All right. Something I wanted to talk to raise with you guys as well is about the value of non-renewable resources compared to the value of renewable resources. So what's your number one, your personal number one non-renewable resource in your life? In your Time, time, isn't it? And yet how many of us do something with the other of our resources? We don't want to spend or deplete our other resources, so we take extra time. And it doesn't really make sense, does it? Because a lot of the money, renewable resource. Time, non-renewable resource. So the more we spend time to save money, it's not even logical, really, is it? It puts us out of harmony with the principle. Suze, is it a question, comment, or homework? <laughs> Don't know. <laughs> you need to know. It just, if you, it's comment, okay, we, no, we're no comments today, yeah. Okay. Yep, I think we've mentioned everything that I, oh, no, we haven't. Key one I wanted to mention, using willpower instead of developing will. which really re relates to some of my previous comments. But if you think about it in such a stark contrast, how much do we use willpower to try and get through the day, get through the task, get through, get to the emotion, which we all learnt in the previous groups doesn't work, rather than spending the time developing will. And that puts us out of harmony with the economy principle. Yeah. Okay, so can you see, starting to see that there's a lot to these principles, isn't there, beyond the physical? There's, for every one of the foundation principles, there's a physical component to it, sure, there's an emotional component and there's a spiritual component to it. So as you think about your homework, and hopefully you'll continue this reflection after you leave, it's a good way to consider it, isn't it? Yeah. All right, let's move on to function. Who found a way that they were living in harmony with function principles? Anyone? <laughs> Chris? Um, when I buy something, I usually buy it based on function over beauty, and I like ruggedness and durability. Is that in harmony with the principle, though? 
Because uh, aren't you saying you, you value things that are functional above things that are beautiful? I guess I do, yeah. Yeah. And you're almost saying this rugged thing. Is that code for I kind of, I'm a bit rebellious and I like things that other people don't <laughs> like to be? <laughs> I like something that's solid that's going to last for a while. Yeah, that's, that's good. Yeah. That's in, that's a, that you want something that's functional. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Okay, yeah. cool. Uh, if we go back to Dave. If I make, build or construct something, I try to design it or create it with more than one function, also that it's very practical, functional, logical and easy to use. And I also try to document what I've done so that it can be remade or improved upon. Awesome. And do you consider how beautiful it is? That's usually a secondary function. <laughs> Yeah, I guess the key thing about this principle is that the more we embrace and um, have an emotional connection with these principles, the more our creations will naturally be not only functional, more functional, but also naturally more beautiful, intuitively more beautiful. Yeah, because sometimes we, we have a skewed understanding of what is beautiful because it's based a little bit on sometimes our emotional injuries, isn't it? Um, our desire to fit in or to rebel or all these kinds of things. Um, and, sometime, and so sometimes we just, we just find it hard to think, well, what is beautiful, you know? Yeah. Dam, did you have one you wanted to share? Yeah. I have it in my mind that if I need something, it's somebody else's job to make it for me and that for each function, I have one item, that the idea that one item could have multiple functions yeah. somehow hasn't crossed my mind. Yeah, yeah, cool. That, yeah, that, that's interesting reflections, hey? Yeah. Okay, who found they're in disharmony with the function principle? Yeah, anyone want to share what they found? David? Um, I don't know the true function of my, f my soul has been emotional. Yeah. Mm. Yep. Yeah, cool. And this idea, remember Jesus said that the more we work on our soul and live in our soul and heal our soul, we naturally look, smell and what did you have? Taste better or something. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to get more beautiful. Yeah. All right. One more before we move on. Anyone? Nat? Um, I realised that I do create multifunctional things. The problem that I realised is I do it selfishly because I'm only considering my needs of the multifunctionality and nobody else's. Yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so you can see there's a lot of this sort of ethics and equality comes into these foundation principles, doesn't it? Another way that's very common on Earth is to create something just for the sake of beauty and also at the same time at the expense of many other creations you know, animal testing for cosmetics and, you know, the way that even a lot of our clothing is made and artwork is made, there's a lot of environmental damage that happens through those processes. Yeah. Okay. Even though clothing has multifunction, <laughs> it still covers you and can look quite nice. Yeah. All right. Let's get on to permanence. Did anyone struggle with this this one, reflecting on what that was all about? Yeah, a few of you. Yeah, who had who felt they found something interesting? Yep, Shula. I found that I'm um, have been not consistent with the kids um, and permanent with what I tell them, and I've allowed myself to be manipulated and appealed to, and I've manip manipulated and appealed to them. Yeah. Awesome. This is so common with parenting, so common where we don't have a feeling of permanence uh, with the way that we introduce laws into the family, the way that we respond to issues and conflict, the way that often it's our emotions that are our emotional injuries that we're trying to avoid or are being manipulated, which cause us to be inconsistent across the board and, and actually overlook some big issues and underplay other issues or overplay other issues. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lovely reflection, Shula. And I think if everyone was quite reflective about the way they've 
they've interacted in their relationships and with their kids. There's a lot there to think about in terms of permanence. Yeah. And, and even if we think about it in terms of the way that we deal with everyone in our life, when we're in harmony with this issue of permanence, we, are this, we treat everyone the same way, regardless of where we are. I mean, oh, perhaps that's a bit of a over stating it, but we have the same level of ethics within us. We don't, there's no special treatment for one based on what they're going to give us or how they're making us feel. That we, we are consistent when it comes to all of the other foundation principles with everyone, no matter what the circumstance. So we don't give up on truth, we don't give up on love, we don't play favourites, we don't do all of these things. But one of the key things is, that we cannot establish ethics and morality, which are really a reflection of permanence, when we honour fear. Because if you think about it, if you honour fear, you're going to get to a certain situation, whether you've got these kind of values developing in yourself, you get to a certain situation, fear is triggered, they all go out the window. And the thing about ethics and morality is that they are permanent, by definition. Yeah, yeah. Okay, who else had some? Teresa? Um, generally, I live in chaos and untidiness, untidiness um, even though I, I know that when I'm, things are tidy, neat and tidy, I feel a lot more um, balanced mm. and things will flow better. Yep. Yeah. So I use it as an excuse to stay stressed and not be responsible. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm going to go deeper again with you guys. What about when you make a contract with someone, be it a business contract or you have a verbal agreement with someone, and then you find out, oh, I didn't have all the information when I made that contract. Uh, now it seems like I might have to undergo a bit of personal hardship or discomfort to meet that contract or it might cost me something financially or emotionally and how how many of us go well no i made that deal i'm going to stick by it that's an issue of permanence and if we're not doing that or if we're not honoring our debts we're out of harmony with permanence aren't we yeah okay What about treating our family members as more special than others? Oh, I'm very generous with my children. Those other people in the supermarket, I wouldn't even think of them, you know, any day of the week or what, what I could give to them. So, so playing favourites in all areas of our life. Yeah. And what about treating other people's feelings as just as important as your own? Some of us run into a feeling and go, well, everyone else's feelings be damned. Mine are the most important in this situation and I'm gonna, they're going to be honoured or I'm going to inflict them on everyone else or other people have got to make this feeling go away. I don't care how they feel. That's out of harmony with permanence. Okay. All right, let's move on to our final one. Is, is, did you find it good homework in this way? Yeah. It, it, I felt it really, um, it helps you to sort of start to solidify what does this, this principle thing really mean and how, how is it really applicable? Yeah, and it's lovely to hear some of your reflections. Okay, scope. Uh, if we go to Felix, and then we come to Anna on the other side. I don't trust that um, my soul is actually designed to um, handle any emotion, uh, every emotion, and that um, God has created me, uh, designed me properly and well. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, cool. So Provided I follow, um, am in harmony with his laws. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, great. Thanks, Felix. Anna? Um, I cut myself uh, off communication uh, when I choose evil when I get afraid or, or something like that. Yep. So, so when I close down. Yep. Mm. And so you cut yourself off from communicating, having 
engaging with these external rules and laws that would help you engage with the universe. Yeah. Is that what you mean? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And uh, if we come to Tristan, and then who's right up the back? Michaela. Yeah. Um, I can occasionally um, be a bit emotionally close to how every, everything inter intertwines, especially emotionally when I'm in addiction. So what ends up happening is I do something out of addiction and then it creates secondary and tertiary problems for not only my own life but often the lives around me like a wave effect because everything is in interconnected. Yes. <laughs> and yeah. I'm not seeing that at all. Yeah, yeah. And that's a really big issue for a lot of us where we become very self-involved in our own life, our own emotion, our own addiction, and we're not seeing the, the, the flow-on effect of everything that's happening. Yeah. Okay, cool. And then we had Michaela up the back. Hey. Um, I've created children that require a lot of work and I'm imposing my damage onto them and messaging, messing with their inbuilt laws within them and creating a dynamic where they need me far more than what is the truth. Yeah, yeah. Awesome reflection, I think, for a lot of people. Yeah. Thanks, Michaela. All right, some of the other ones that I had written down here. Any attempt to override the inbuilt laws that govern God's creation. So whether that be the inbuilt laws inside of myself taking drugs, trying to, get, trying to take medicines to suppress my emotions and, and get away from myself. I'm just trying to override. It's kind of crazy when you consider it, isn't it? When you think human soul, pinnacle of God's creation, I'll just override that whole process by taking a drug, caffeine. You know, it's never going to work in the long term. And you'll learn a bit today more about how compensation works and things like that tomorrow, yeah. Yeah. Um, but also when we try to override the inbuilt laws in other of God's creations, we're out of harmony with this principle. And then the question I had for you guys were, was, do the rules that you create in your family, in your relationships and in your workplaces and everywhere in your life, because if you think about it, we're all kind of little lawmakers, aren't we? We're all, we're all making rules everywhere all the time. Do they allow for the expansion of everyone involved, including yourself and others? Do they promote the free flow of emotion? And do they provoke, promote the development of each individual's character and nature? Because that's all a part of scope. So that's just some, some reflection there on, on this scope principle. All right. Okay. So good homework, hey? And um, thank you very much for participating. It was really nice. Yeah. All right. So this is the end of our foundation principles session, really, right now. And just a reminder that, that as we've seen again this morning, they form the foundation of everything in the universe and they affect all laws. So really coming to understand those principles and what they mean from, a, from an emotional perspective will help you a lot in terms of getting in harmony with law. We can also learn, Jesus has said some basic facts about God and God's personality, nature and so on, but I think we can learn so much about God's nature just from these very foundation principles, can't we? They are basic in relative to everything else we can learn, but they're, they're amazing. And also we can learn a lot about love, the actual quality. What is love about? Because if we think in love is a reflection of all of these principles upheld. So when we say we love someone, are we upholding all these principles? You know, it's a good, it's a good way for us to learn about love, isn't it? And, and I know a lot of you feeling, I could feel a little bit when you're discussing your homework, you're feeling a bit down on yourself about some of these things, guys. But honestly, this is information now. You know, every reflection that you make you, and every bit of information you learn about these principles and how you're in and out of harmony with them, this is information that you can use for good. You know, it's not about beating yourself up or, you know, oh, no, I don't, you know, what a mess I've made. That's not what this, this whole week's about. This is about you learning so you can change. And ultimately, that affects 
everything, not just your own happiness, but the, everything around you, this interconnectedness that we're talking about. Okay, all right. So our next session will be with me, or our next presentation, and I'll be introducing you to the next set of principles that Jesus will be teaching you. Um, and yeah, I hope you enjoy our order principles session because I, um, uh, uh, well, I think I love what Jesus is going to talk to you about. So <laughs> thanks again for your participation. We'll have a 10-minute break and I'll see you back here to talk about order.